Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another mining ship. And this one is called the Amethyst Class Mining Vessel, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a small block mining ship that utilizes only hydrogen thrusters to get around. It's got a couple of sensor blocks on here to do different things, such as opening and closing the cockpit to allow you get in and out, and of course to activate and deactivate some lights when you come to land this ship down on a platform or at your base. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Amethyst class mining vessel is 486 small blocks, using the decorative block number 2 DLC pack and no mods. We can also see all the information about it on the Steam Workshop page, so we'll simply give this a thumbs up and move all the way around to the very front, we have a quick look around the outside. Then we'll fly around for a bit and test it out against the asteroid sitting right over there. And in case you're interested in the skybox I'm currently using, there will also be a link to that in the description below. It's a rather colourful one and it's called Pointless Hodgepodge. Anyway, coming all the way around over to here at the very front, this is what we get. Front and centre, we've got ourselves a camera to help drive this thing forwards when we're going deep into an asteroid. We can see surrounding that a bunch of glass blocks, which is how we're going to peer outside from first person view. On the left and right of that, we've got our big mining drills to make sure we can go straight through an asteroid without damaging anything around the ship. We've also got a couple of small hydrogen thrusters to help us stop, and some spotlights just in case we need it. If we were to start to move around the side, this is what we get. Going past our drills, put my light on for the moment. We've got a couple more hydrogen thrusters for the left and right, and we've got some lights on the side which will activate via a sensor block just to light up the tunnels you're trying to mine through. We can also see some hydrogen tanks to make sure you can fly for a nice long time. If we were to come all the way around over to the back of our drilling section, right here we can see some more hydrogen thrusters to push us around and how it's been connected up to the main body right here. If we were to turn our attention right to this section here, we can see a large cargo container to store all the resources you gather and a survival kit just in case you need it. Behind our survival kit, we've got an O2H shoe generator. And all the way around over to here, we've got a auction tank so you don't suffocate in case you forgot to bring some bottles along. If we were to continue around towards the very back of the ship, we've got some more great block work. Here are two large hydrogen thrusters to push us along, and we can disable these in case we want to rely on the small ones sitting behind our drills. But yes, at the very back, this is what we get. Got ourselves a connector to dock this thing up, which is one of two connectors on this ship. We also have an LCD screen that says caution, and a red light right below here. If we were to move all the way up and above and look down, we can see the auction tank on the opposite side, and how that's all been connected up to the main body over to that connector and straight towards our cargo container at the front. If we were to move along, we can see two gyroscopes to give it some nice control. There's our survival kit. There's our large cargo container, an antenna, and a blinking white light. There is a hinge for our cockpit to lift it up and down. That's going to be done via a sensor or a block in the cockpit. And we see a couple of batteries dotted around on our drilling arms. If we were to drop down and come underneath past our camera, past our glass cockpit, this is what we get. There is a sensor which is going to be responsible for lifting up that glass to allow you to get in and out. If we were to continue along towards the bottom of this thing, we've got a couple of pistons with some armoured plates on the bottom, which are simply there to stabilise the vehicle when you were to land it down on the ground. So we have that landing gear at the back there, but these can be deployed all the way down to make sure you don't damage this connector, just in case you are planning for a rough landing. Pulling away from that and continuing along, all the way over to here, there's some more sensor blocks which are going to be for the landing lights. Then we can see our thruster pods at the back there for our auction tanks, our gyroscopes, and there's our landing gear. And there we go, that is a very brief look around the outside of the Amethyst class mining vessel, and it does look fantastic with how it's all been set up. But now it's time for me to grab hold of my character, and I'll show you just how that cockpit opens and closes. Just grabbing hold of that, pressing F to get out, it might start opening up because I am pretty close to the sensor, but that is what it does. It'll raise it all the way up, allow you to get inside, and then you can manually close it yourself, or we can simply just go back and force towards it, and it will activate again and start to close. But here it comes all the way down. We've got a transparent LCD screen telling us our meters per second, and now we're nice and sealed inside. And there we go. That's all it does. It's a very simple and nifty thing to have, and it saves you from using a traditional cockpit. But bring up the HUD, this is what we get for our controls around the ship. 
Number one is going to be for our drills to left mouse to collect or right mouse to make a big hole. Number two is for manual control over our cockpit at the front there to raise it all the way up and to lower it all the way down. Number three is for our hydrogen thrusters at the back there which is going to be for these two large ones to toggle them on and off. So we can still fly around on those small ones at the front there but we're going to be a hell of a lot slower. So put them back on for the moment. Number four is going to be for all the other hydrogen thrusters around the ship. So pressing that, now everything else is turned off, we can use this now as a cruise control so we can boost forwards and we're not going to slow down. Putting that back on, number five is for our batteries to auto or recharge. Number six and number seven is for our lights around the ship. With number six is going to be for our landing lights below our ship so we toggle that on and off, there we go. And number seven is going to be for our mining lights which are going to be for the ones on the side right here. I think that's a better view right there so we'll activate that. There we go. Number 8 is for our connector to lock and unlock it. Number 9 is for our pistons under here so we can activate that. That'll drop all the way down and as you can see there it'll now come down to the level point of our landing gear at the back. Raising that all the way up and coming over to tab number 2 these are simply to turn on and off the sensors around the ship and 8 and 9 is for our cameras to view it all the way forwards and view the camera underneath to help dock it up. So what we'll do now before we do a mining test is a quick little thruster test. We won't do a full one. We're simply going to go forwards and backwards and test it once we're full up. So if we have our thrusters all turned on, moving forwards, this is what we get with some fantastic speed thanks to those large hydrogen thrusters at the back there. Coming to a stop, we're a little bit slower, but it's not too bad at the end of the day. And we do have enough gyroscope controls to do a 180 and stop ourselves a lot quicker. However, turning off the large hydrogen thrusters at the back there, moving forwards and moving back, we have identical speed either way, which is very nice to see. Yes, we just turn them back on for the moment and now we can come across to this asteroid and start to mine up all the stone. We'll turn off our large thrusters at the back there because we do not need it while mining through this asteroid. Now we're just going to come across to here and we're going to start gathering stuff up. Okay, so I've finished mining up all of this stone. We are nice and full. We can't collect any more. So now it's time to come into here and take a look at what we've collected. We can see all the stuff in each of the drills. Our survival kit also has a couple of them. If you were to come over to our containers, we can see our large cargo containers got a nice lot inside. And of course, we got our connectors, small cargo containers, and the other connector underneath. So yes, we can collect up a nice lot of stuff in a short amount of time and take it back to base. But how does it handle once we're full up? So turning on the rear thrusters and moving forwards, this is what we get. We are a lot slower than we were beforehand and it's going to take quite some time to reach 100 meters per second. If we were to come to a stop, it's as you expect. We are very, very slow and we will need to do a 180 to boost ourselves forwards and slow ourselves down a lot quicker or risk slamming into something if you weren't planning ahead. There we go, that should do quite nicely and then we'll turn off those thrusters at the back there and start to move forwards. This is what we get without the large thrusters at the back there. If you want to save on hydrogen, we are going to be very slow, but it is a lot safer to drive this thing around. And there we go. That is pretty much it for the Amethyst class mining vessel has to offer. It's a very nice mining ship. It looks fantastic. You can carry a lot of stuff and it's very small, very compact and should serve you well on your voyages. And there we go. We did a nice lot of damage there. We only lost one drill. Seems like the drills are very, very good at preventing crashes. So that's all we lost, and it looks like we can easily replace a drill on there as nothing else got damaged. But yes, as I was saying, it's a very nice little ship. If you are looking for something to play around with in your world, play it up with a few bits of resources, then offload it at your base or at the trade station, depending on what you want to do. So there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download it out and play around with it yourself. Highly recommend you do, as well as a link to the skybox I'm currently using. It is a rather nice one. Lots of different colours, but still retains that dark look that I do like in skyboxes. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.